six volcanoes erupted across six different continents within the span of just three weeks. Ethiopia's Haley Gubi volcano sent ash clouds stretching all the way to East Asia. Indonesia's Mount Siamaru joined the surge. Kilauea roared back to life in Hawaii. Russia, Colombia, and Mexico followed suit. This is not random. When volcanic activity clusters like this across the globe, it signals something bigger building beneath the surface. The timing coincides perfectly with intense solar activity that bombarded Earth's magnetic field just weeks before these eruptions began. What you are witnessing is a rare planetary scale geological event. The connection between solar storms and volcanic activity is not science fiction. It is a mechanism that scientists are actively studying. Today, we will examine the evidence behind this surge and what it means for regions sitting on active volcanic zones. The numbers tell the story. On November 23rd, Ethiopia's Haley Gubi volcano erupted with such force that satellite imagery tracked its ash plume across the Red Sea and into East Asian airspace. This represents one of the most significant Ethiopian volcanic events in recorded history, with ash reaching altitudes of 15 kilometers above sea level. Within days, Indonesia's Mount Siamaru began showing increased seismic activity, followed by explosive eruptions that forced evacuations across multiple villages. The Indonesian Center for Volcanology recorded over 200 volcanic earthquakes in a 48-hour period, a pattern typically seen only during major eruptive phases. Hawaii's Kilauea, which had been relatively quiet since its last major activity cycle, suddenly reactivated, with lava fountains reaching heights not seen since 2018. This time, the eruption characteristics differ significantly from previous patterns. The lava chemistry shows higher gas content, suggesting deeper magma chamber involvement. Russia's Kamchatka Peninsula saw simultaneous activity from two separate volcanic systems. The Shivaluk volcano produced pyroclastic flows, while Kurimsky volcano maintained steady explosive activity. For context, having multiple volcanoes active at the same time in this region occurs roughly once every decade. Colombia's Nevado del Ruiz elevated its alert status to orange after detecting increased seismic activity and gas emissions. Mexican authorities raised similar concerns about Popocatépetl, which began producing ash columns visible from Mexico City. The statistical analysis reveals the extraordinary nature of this clustering. Volcanic monitoring stations operate continuously across these regions, feeding data to the Global Volcanism Program. Their records show that having six major volcanic systems active simultaneously across different continents typically occurs once, once every 50 to 100 years. Historical geological records support this rarity. The last comparable global volcanic surge occurred in the 1960s, when multiple systems activated within similar time frames. Before that, the 1880s saw a comparable pattern, coinciding with significant solar activity cycles. Current monitoring data shows something unprecedented. The volcanic systems are not just active, they are exhibiting synchronized patterns in their seismic signatures Earthquake swarms beneath these volcanoes began within days of each other, despite being separated by thousands of kilometers. Ground deformation measurements from satellite interferometry reveal that magma chambers beneath several of these volcanoes began inflating during the same two-week period in early November. This suggests a common triggering mechanism rather than coincidental local geological processes. The Global Seismic Network has detected low-frequency tremors characteristic of magma movement occurring simultaneously across multiple volcanic regions. These tremor signatures typically indicate deep magma chamber dynamics, the kind of activity that precedes major eruptive phases. Atmospheric monitoring stations have recorded unusual sulfur dioxide emissions from multiple volcanic sources simultaneously. The combined atmospheric impact of these emissions is creating measurable effects on regional air quality across three continents. 
What makes this surge particularly significant is the depth of the seismic activity. Most of these volcanoes are showing earthquake activity originating from depths of 20 to 30 kilometers below the surface, much deeper than typical pre-eruption seismic patterns. This suggests involvement of deep crustal processes rather than shallow magma chamber dynamics. The evidence points to a global geological event that transcends individual volcanic systems. The synchronization, depth signatures, and atmospheric impacts collectively indicate we are observing something that occurs on geological timescales measured in decades, not years. The timeline reveals a crucial pattern. Between October 15th and November 8th, Earth experienced a series of X-class solar flares, the most powerful category on the solar flare scale. The largest, an X9.3 flare on October 28th, triggered a G5 geomagnetic storm, the highest level on the geomagnetic disturbance scale. Within two weeks of this solar bombardment, the first volcanic eruptions began. This timing is not coincidental. According to emerging research on electromagnetic and geological interactions, solar flares release massive bursts of electromagnetic energy that travel from the sun to earth in approximately eight minutes. When these electromagnetic pulses interact with Earth's magnetosphere, they create powerful electrical currents that penetrate deep into the planet's crust. The proposed mechanism works like this. Intense solar activity generates electromagnetic currents that flow through Earth's conductive layers, including underground water systems and mineral-rich rock formations. These currents create subtle but measurable changes in the electrical properties of the crust surrounding magma chambers. Magma chambers exist in delicate equilibrium. The molten rock inside maintains specific pressure and temperature conditions that keep it stable beneath the surface. When electromagnetic currents alter the electrical conductivity of surrounding rock, they can destabilize this equilibrium by changing how heat and pressure distribute within the chamber. Recent studies using magnetotelluric imaging, a technique that maps underground electrical conductivity, have detected changes in crustal conductivity patterns following major geomagnetic storms. These changes occur at depths where magma chambers typically form, between 10 and 40 kilometers below the surface. The electromagnetic effects extend beyond direct electrical currents. Solar radiation also influences atmospheric and oceanic circulation patterns through heating and electromagnetic interactions. These changes create subtle but persistent pressure variations that can affect tectonic stress patterns across large regions. Atmospheric coupling represents another pathway. Intense solar radiation heats the upper atmosphere unevenly, creating pressure gradients that propagate downward through the atmosphere and into the ocean. These pressure changes, while small, can influence tectonic stress fields when they persist for weeks or months. The oceanic response involves thermal expansion and contraction cycles that create loading and unloading effects on the seafloor. Since many active volcanic systems lie beneath or near ocean basins, these pressure variations can contribute to magma chamber destabilization. Scientific evidence supporting electromagnetic influence on tectonic systems comes from multiple sources. Seismologists have documented correlations between geomagnetic storm intensity and earthquake frequency in certain tectonically active regions. The correlation is not perfect, but it is statistically significant enough to warrant investigation. Laboratory experiments using rock samples under controlled electromagnetic fields show measurable changes in fracture patterns and stress distribution. While these experiments cannot replicate the full complexity of natural magma chambers, they demonstrate that electromagnetic fields do influence rock behavior under pressure. However, distinguishing correlation from causation remains challenging. Solar activity follows roughly 11-year cycles, and volcanic activity also shows cyclical patterns over similar timescales. Determining whether solar activity directly triggers volcanic eruptions 
or whether both phenomena respond to deeper planetary cycles, requires more extensive data collection. Current research limitations include the relatively short period of detailed electromagnetic monitoring compared to geological timescales. Comprehensive geomagnetic measurements have only existed for about 50 years. This is a brief moment in volcanic terms. This limited record makes it difficult to establish definitive causal relationships. What scientists do know is that electromagnetic fields measurably affect the physical properties of rocks and minerals. What remains theoretical is whether these effects are strong enough to trigger major volcanic eruptions or whether they merely influence eruption timing when other geological conditions are already primed for activity. The evidence suggests electromagnetic influence on volcanic systems is real, but the magnitude of this influence and its role in triggering versus timing volcanic events continues to be studied and debated within the scientific community. The clustering pattern we are witnessing demands serious attention from coastal and volcanic communities worldwide. Current risk assessment models typically evaluate volcanic threats on a regional basis, but this global synchronization suggests we need to think about volcanic hazards from a planetary perspective. Early warning systems are already adapting to track both solar and seismic activity simultaneously. The United States Geological Survey now incorporates space weather data into their volcanic monitoring protocols. When major geomagnetic storms occur, monitoring stations increase their surveillance frequency for active volcanic systems. NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center issues alerts that volcanic observatories use to enhance their readiness levels. This cross-disciplinary approach recognizes that understanding volcanic threats requires monitoring what happens 93 million miles away from Earth, not just what occurs beneath our feet. For communities near active volcanic zones, this interconnection changes how you should think about preparedness. Traditional volcanic emergency plans focus on local geological indicators, earthquake swarms, gas emissions, and ground deformation. Now you should also monitor space weather forecasts. When major solar flares occur, residents in volcanic regions should review their evacuation routes and emergency supplies. The two-week lag time between intense solar activity and potential volcanic response provides a preparation window that did not exist in previous emergency planning frameworks. Practical preparedness steps include maintaining emergency kits that account for both volcanic ashfall and potential power grid disruptions from geomagnetic storms. Solar activity that influences volcanic systems also affects electrical infrastructure, creating compound disaster scenarios. Stay informed through official channels that now coordinate between multiple agencies. The Global Volcanism Program shares data with space weather monitoring systems. NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory provides early warning of solar flare activity that volcanic observatories use for enhanced monitoring protocols. The Smithsonian's Volcano Hazards Program maintains real-time databases that cross-reference solar activity with volcanic unrest patterns. These resources help communities understand when heightened vigilance is warranted based on both terrestrial and extraterrestrial factors. Understanding natural disaster interconnections becomes crucial for effective preparedness. Volcanic eruptions triggered during periods of intense solar activity may occur with less local warning than traditional eruption patterns. Electromagnetic destabilization can accelerate magma chamber processes, potentially shortening the typical precursor period. Regional emergency management agencies are updating their protocols to account for simultaneous volcanic threats across multiple systems. When solar activity influences global volcanic patterns, individual eruptions may not follow historical precedents for timing and intensity. Monitor agencies including USGS Volcano Hazards Program, the Global Volcanism Program, and NOAA's Volcanic Alert Systems. These organizations now coordinate with space weather monitoring to provide comprehensive threat assessments. The Alaska Volcano Observatory and the Cascades Volcano Observatory 
have implemented solar activity monitoring into their standard operating procedures. When X-class solar flares occur, these observatories automatically increase monitoring intensity for all systems under their surveillance. This represents a fundamental shift in how we understand and prepare for volcanic hazards. The recognition that space weather influences terrestrial geological processes means effective preparedness requires monitoring both the ground beneath our feet and the space environment surrounding our planet. The evidence is clear. This volcanic clustering warrants serious monitoring and preparation. The reality is that simultaneous eruptions across six continents within weeks are statistically extraordinary, occurring once every 50 to 100 years based on geological records. This level of global volcanic synchronization suggests we are witnessing a rare planetary-scale geological event in real time. 